Hydraulic fracturing has its risks, but they are manageable, especially when the potential economic benefits are considered. While top-down government regulation has been the norm for the oil and gas industry, other, less stifling regulatory alternatives exist. Meet Meg, a state mining regulator. She's exploring opportunities for improvement in hydraulic fracturing regulations. Water markets represent a property rights-inspired approach to oversight. By establishing well-functioning water markets, prices will encourage water conservation and recycling. But that still begs the question of how to deal with other environmental issues. Property rights could be used to hold producers accountable and reduce unnecessary risks, which lead to a more efficient and effective hydraulic fracturing process. For example, non-harmful tracers can be used to assign a fingerprint to water used in fracking. If an incident occurs, investigators would be able to identify the source of the problem. This is crucial to ensuring strict accountability for costs, a central component of secure property rights. Financial products like surety bonding and insurance strongly encourage producers to consider risks carefully and hold them accountable. Insurance companies oversee common standards, so policy payouts do not exceed expected premiums. Think about how car insurance companies encourage drivers not to speed by increasing their premiums if the driver gets a speeding ticket. Surety bonding companies set interest rates at a level where payout would not exceed interest payments. Here, think about how bail bond companies work to ensure a defendant shows up to court by charging different interest rates based on flight risks. In short, these companies would assume a market-based regulatory role. As shown in part two, the current top-down command and control government regulatory regime isn't the most effective way to encourage companies to mitigate the risks. Self-regulation works best when heavy-handed government regulation, including the potential for banning hydraulic fracturing, appears imminent and behavior from a bad actor affects the entire industry. For example, the Institution of Nuclear Power Operation regularly inspects nuclear power plants, sets performance objectives, and collaborates with the main governmental nuclear regulatory agency, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, on other regulatory items. In consumer electronics, Underwriters Laboratories verifies and certifies that manufacturers are in compliance with consumer protection standards. An independent third-party company like UL would only certify the safest products and demand stringent best practices from manufacturers because its reputation and profits are at stake. Meg has found a handful of alternative approaches to top-down government regulation that use property rights to manage risk and hold producers accountable for their actions. Any of these options would simplify the process, eliminate politicking, ensure victims receive compensation when harmed, and incentivize operators to account for potential risks. In all, property rights provide citizens and their elected officials with a way of capturing the benefits of hydraulic fracturing while protecting the environment in a more cost-effective way.